Hi, Nick from Patrick's here, and today I'm sitting down with Lenny Hilton of Afterlater Audio. Hey, Nick. Thanks for having me in. Happy to be here at Patchworks. Yeah, happy to have you. And today we will be talking a little bit about uh, the module Dirty Laundry and also just kind of talking about um, Afterlater Audio and especially how, you know, we've been involved together, kind of growing side by side. So, yeah, it was a few years ago that one day you just showed up with a box of modules. I think it was a Sunday. <laughs> and we had been emailing, and I had just taken over as a retail director. And you're like, hey, do you want to carry these things? And, you know, still being new at it, I think I, I really – appreciate the fact that you just showed up one day with that box <laughs> and it just had these modules in it and they were the um you know things like clouds and and certain other mutable instruments from that first run that are super popular and uh again like modules and effects like clouds is still to go to beads is still to go to so to have that to help round out people's systems is a no-brainer to bring it into the shop but you know you've always been able to provide these high quality modules at a price that's really easy for people just getting into this or they need one or two extra modules just to round out their um, system. So yeah, that's been really cool from, from our perspective, mm -hmm. but you could tell us more about just like the Genesis of Afterlighter yeah, Audio sure. and all of that. Yeah. So uh, yeah, those early days um, and certainly super appreciative of the kind of friendliness and just the general support uh, from Patchworks and from the overall Seattle community. And then also um, as the company's grown uh, broader across the U S and then eventually in shops around the world. Um, but uh, yeah, those early days um, uh, with um uh, clouds and uh, getting making that available. It certainly was the the uh, the impetus there was to get uh, these modules more available to folks because uh, at that time it was just available uh, via your buddy, via synth boards, via whatever, um, and trying to make those a bit more uh, easier uh, easier to find, easier to to access. Getting an actual warranty with it, um, where folks uh, you know a company will actually stand behind it and repair it um, if for you know whatever happened to it. Um, that, that was, you know, a big part of that motivation in those uh, early days, making those discontinued or those, you know, redesigned modules uh, available for, for folks. And now we've grown a bit since then, and we've been working towards these uh, uh, more, uh, the original um, uh, releases of the small super utilitarian modules, and now kind of eventually growing into uh, these more complex modules like Dirty Laundry. Yeah, and it's been really cool because with these new modules too, um, it's, it's really cool to see a company really hone in on a, a few core competencies. So with, with the Boss Filthy Tilt Blend, these are all very affordable modules, very straightforward, the building blocks of subtractive synthesis. So if you wanted, and I actually did do that where I created like a little after layer audio system. And, yeah. and again, it's, it's really fun. You know, when, once you get into modular, especially if you've been playing around with synths for a long time, like there's still joy in running that, you know, oscillator into whatever, really FMing the, the, the filter, using a filter audio rate, doing all sorts of stuff. And so for not too much, you're able to actually put together a really compelling modular system of all after layer audio modules. And, um, you know, and that's been really cool to like actually see grow from, you know, that initial, cause I actually remember you posting on some of the Seattle, uh, Facebook pages yeah, yeah. for some of these builds. And, uh, again, it's just really cool to see that progress. And then now, you know, again, we're more of a community oriented shop. So when you came forward and it was like, Hey, I have a few designs, you know, I, I've given some feedback on dirty laundry and some other designs. And again, asking for that feedback and being part of the like whole community in that aspect is just really cool to see because, you know, as we grow, you grow, you know, um, you've always been able to provide, you know, that support for these modules and you're right. You know, if you buy a, a DIY clouds and it kind of takes a, Take, takes a uh, forever rest who's going to fix it up you know <laughs> yeah i mean every module i mean the, the, it, it's electronics things fail things have problems yeah. um you know uh well, whatever ends up happening um and it, yeah it's always good to have uh the warranty just somebody to stand behind it and e even outside of our warranty we've done plenty of free service for folks mm -hmm. uh, just because again the whole goal is to get people making music and to get them uh uh instruments to go and play with and have fun um and either if that's you know just uh uh as a break from their day-to-day -day activities or yeah, as, a, as a profession, uh, we, we uh, are trying to bring modules that uh, uh, cater to all those 
all those folks. Yeah, and, and and we're pretty proud to have, you know, there's a lot of local synth companies, so we're really proud to have a company like you, one, to help you find the audience and, and help you grow, because, you know, it isn't just us helping you grow. You obviously, once the demand went up, because the demand did go up, <laughs> yeah. you know, you probably learned more about manufacturing and how to keep these things in stock, and especially, you know, in a, in a hobby where, you know, there may not be an oscillator in stock for however long, may not be your fun- your favorite function generator <laughs> out for how long, like yeah. for you to learn those aspects, uh, one as a forcing function because we're always just like, hey, Lenny, we need more modules and <laughs> and all of that. It, it, it's been it's been really cool. So um, I think that that's just been really great. And then you know, prototyping the designs and being able to take in feedback and and take those to heart, I think is super important because I think a lot of people, um, the playabilities of these modules, that's a really huge thing with me. So, you know, when you let me play around with Dirty Laundry, I think one of the pieces of feedback I had was maybe we need to make it a little bit bigger and maybe more control because I found that some of the controls were um, pretty compelling to CV control. So, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, good stuff. Uh, And I I certainly appreciate uh, all, all that feedback on Dirty Laundry. It's gone through a lot of iterations as it was going through <laughs> development and certainly appreciate uh, all that feedback that you gave. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, it has, um, uh, it started out as essentially being another uh, 6HP module originally. Um, and then uh, receiving uh, some initial feedback started and starting to experiment with more circuits, um, started expanding it and expanding it. Um, and uh, yeah, then in uh, the next round of feedback, um, was just, it, it's gone through a lot of hands and gotten a lot of, um, it's gotten a lot better. Uh, and it's certainly a module, um, I'm probably most proud of, um, out of the after later line. Um, and certainly, um, I'm looking forward to, uh, uh, continuing to see it grow and, and, and getting more people's hands. Yeah. Cause you know, like, especially with weight folding, like your first line of modules, again, were very subtractive synth oriented, whereas dirty laundry, you have two different wave folders in there. And, you know, I think that, you know, if you know, this is me just kind of postulating, but kind of the, what you've learned from um, the Benjamin and having sort of like kind of cross fading routing for between two different circuits, yeah. you know, I, that's definitely a thing that I appreciate in the dirty laundry, because usually if I'm trying to pull those tricks off, I'm going to need extra VCAs and different f- mixers, whereas on the dirty laundry, you have a lot of those things. So I guess my question is like, uh, what, what is the Genesis design? Like what, what, what wave folders did you pick? Like, how did you think about routing yeah. and, and those sorts of things? Yeah. So, um, you're, you're absolutely right on the Benjamin call. Mm-hmm. Um, it was a lot of working with Rob. Um, Rob's taught me a ton, um, not really just with working with the Benjamin, but just in the exchange and his thought process and how he goes through and design. Um, and then as we've continued to talk about some additional modules, uh, that we might be able to, uh, uh, bring to market. Um, I've learned a lot, a lot, like you just mentioned, a lot of that is VCA and crossfading, mm-hmm. um, uh, built in and really how it helps, uh, expand the usability on the on the um, instrument and make it a lot more flexible mm-hmm. uh, and uh, capable. And this is where uh, th- these ideas of having uh, the multiple wave folders that you could crossfade between as well as feed into each other. Um, uh, it was just a ton of fun to mm-hmm. play with. It was one of those things I did um, with the early version of it and uh, a blend essentially, um, and had them had them kind of working together, and uh, it was just a ton of fun. Um, but then certainly found that um, as anybody that might have listened to a Dirty Laundry or seen into the other videos, uh, or maybe you'll see here uh, in, in in a bit, um, the um, it can get a bit out of control. Yeah. Um, so offering that VC. VCA capability at end of chain, uh, combined with being able to disable some of that res drive, um, which can get, uh, again, a bit gnarly, yeah. um, makes it, it kind of expands the usability of it. So then it cannot just be about distortion and craziness. Um, it can be about really fine grain wave folding control, um, mm-hmm. which is, uh, and that's where I feel like it's kind of a, a complete module there where you can have simple single stage wave folding with the press circuit, mm-hmm. um, or then get into crazy multi-stage kind of Buchla-esque uh, folding with the fold side. Um, and it just brings in all that uh, uh, control and then feeding them into each other um, or using them as two, two independent uh, wave folders uh, just, again, kind of expands what you can do with a, with a single module. 
Yeah, and that's what I really enjoy about modules like that because you kind of have them in your system and as you need to kind of pull one or two out, because, you know, there's some noise engineering modules that do, I mean, it's not going to be wave folding, but like triple distortion, but, and they do kind of feedback into, or you can chain them up together, but this one, literally, you're able to CV control that. And again, that's something that I'm like, crazy into because that transforms the sound so much so you know whereas you know i say oh the first folder is is mild and the second one is is more intense you're able to say hey this is a single stage in a book class <laughs> you know um but to me it's like uh, if you know the finer details or you're able to experiment with it without knowing that i think that's kind of the genesis of intuitive design yeah. where you're actually able to um find those sorts of things. And it, it is complicated because, you know, there are other sort of um, modules like the like SSF stereo dipole where the routing options are are unbounded, essentially, and same thing with, like, the triptych. So I think that, you know, it's cool to see a module that's in that kind of intermediate range where it's not going to be as, like, immediately apparent, but once you find the tricks to finesse it, like, you realize, oh, the controls are there. I don't need another VCA. I don't need a crossfader. I don't need a mixer to actually access these things. The module actually has that built in. And uh, I mean, you know, I, I did the video on it and just like the output VCA is like super important because uh, especially with that resonant drive circuit, it gets, yeah, like you said, pretty gnarly, <laughs> but it's something that is just like, I don't want to not have that. Like that actually kind of opened my eyes to that sort of trick where, you know, especially with wave folding and distortions, like we're bringing out a lot of maybe noise that may not be great when we're doing these yeah. sorts of things, but we like the effect when there isn't just, you know, cause it's, it's amplifying like the ground noise or, or something like that, some sort of hum. So that VCA is important. And that's something where I'm like, Oh, why don't more things have output VCAs, yeah, you know? Exactly. End of chain output VCA. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's, um, uh, certainly been again, uh, just, um, learned a ton from Rob and incredibly grateful there, yeah. uh, for all the education and kind of bringing in, uh, uh, some of the goodness, um, that I've learned from him in, in, into some of these designs. You'll see some more of that, uh, in some additional upcoming designs where, uh, we're maintaining this kind of cross fading and, uh, kind of richness, uh, in, in complexity in the overall module design. So, yeah. Cause it also kind of reminds me of like, you know, I've been playing around with like complex oscillators for a longer time than, I mean, I started out playing around with make noise stuff. So the idea of like two elements kind of pushing each other to like a sound that you won't get otherwise outside of modular is cool. But then again, like I, I haven't really played around with it so much in terms of filters or, or wave folders. So, you know, it's actually, it's pretty cool. I'm finding new cool things to do to get that weird, kind of sound that I want. So ultimately it's been a great tool for me for my sound design. Um, but yeah, I guess one other thing I kind of wanted to talk about is even just like the drive. Cause some of my, um, feedback there was like, Oh, we should have more CV control over the drive because the way that the resonance and the drive play with each other is, you know, one affects the other. Whereas like, I, that's not something that I thought would immediately be intuitive. Yeah. So once you have the CV control there, you could kind of play around with it. But I guess that first part still is a bit of a mystery to me, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so I guess if you want to explain some of your tips and tricks there in terms of like switching between high and low and how the drive and resonance uh, yeah. kind of play with each other. Cause I found that if I push the drive really high, it actually is Again, I use the words mild or intense. It seems actually more mild when you drive harder and, and you know, I, I could be wrong, but I guess uh, I want to know your yeah, thoughts. Yeah, great. <laughs> um, so, yeah, the, the res drive circuit, um, it, the, those two knobs certainly uh, play off each other um, in, in how you're going to get response out of the module. Um, the knobs might feel backwards at times as well. <laughs> um, it all kind of, yeah, anyways, it, 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 it all kind of depends on, on your perspective, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, but um uh the the place where i really like to bring in cv control on the res and drive side is in particular um when just passing in a drone mm -hmm. um so just passing in a steady sine wave at you know whatever frequency typically lower because you're going to add a bunch of upper harmonics so starting low in, in your range um and then just modulating the bejeebus out of uh <laughs> the press res and drive um can really bring in uh, some some uh, fun tones. Um, I find that they're that bringing in that CV control when you're bringing in um, a, an actual step sequence, you know, an actual Volper octave or um, uh, some can get a bit. That's where it starts to get a bit too much going on. Mm -hmm. um, 
Uh, and so in those times, I just like to then adjust with the knobs and leave the CV control alone. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can get into, again, that kind of gnarly craziness uh, mm -hmm. from that resin drive. Um, and then, yeah, again, with that with the on-off circuit or being able to turn it on and off, then just kind of simplifies it down. So you can essentially fade it out with, with one of the faders um, and just kill it. Um, or um, you can always just leave it engaged as well and just fade it out. So Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's been kind of cool because, you know, one of the tricks I keep on trying to figure out is, uh, you know, especially with like TB303 style bass lines and like that resonant drive does add that rippling that gets that really throaty, yeah. throaty sound. So I, I've been especially, you know, like it's it's kind of a trick that's kind of new to me, honestly, and uh, play around with this with the scope and see that that actually accomplishes it then it's become kind of my favorite way to beef up that acid baseline it, sound, you know, <laughs> it is a ton of fun to sit and watch this thing on an oscilloscope. I will yeah, say that. that is as true. A, as somebody that spent many hours debugging this thing and improving yeah. it, uh, um, uh, watching and playing with this thing on a scope is you can make some fun looking shapes. <laughs> yeah. I mean that, you know, and that's kind of, you know, this is a bit of a tangent, but, um, especially with this and, and wave folding and complex oscillations, like say if you get two biosks and, and start just, FMing each other, like the use of a scope to play around with these things are, are super useful because, you know, you'll never know what the end result is, but you'll actually start seeing those sorts of patterns. So you'll know, you know, if I turn this knob here or even, you know, what that resonant like rippling happens on the, on the waves, like it's, it's important for your sound design because you're right. Like it can get a little too crazy if you just patch everything into every jack, you know? Yeah. So well, I, I, maybe I'll help with selling somebody else's modules here. If, yeah. I, if I could just say, yeah. get your Mordax data. Yeah, <laughs> definitely get your Mordax data. It's, it, it, you know, I, for me, I, um, it used to not be in my performance case that I dig out with, but now it's one, it's great when I'm actually patching and it has a tune it's, in it. <laughs> it's the only reason why I wanted a 104 yeah. to bring today was to add in the data so yeah. that we could have that as part of the display. Yeah, but it is super useful, especially when you're doing wave folding, because wave folding is that technique that if you haven't played around with modular synthesis, you probably are kind of be hard pressed to find something that has dedicated wave folding. You're gonna see a lot of things with filtering. So to see what that even looks like is is, is pretty sweet. And then, you know, you can uh, correlate the sound with, with how it looks. And then again, you can kind of do some patching without even, uh, hearing it sometimes, you yeah. know, but, um, yeah. So do you have any other sort of like tips and tricks you like about the dirty laundry? You know, I know that we, we barely went over the sub octave, uh, you know, the sub oscillator. Yeah, sub oscillator on there. Yeah, so yeah, the the idea behind that sub oscillator is, as I mentioned, you're going to be bringing in, you know, some fundamental that you'll that you'll bring into this, and then using either press, res drive, or the fold knobs, you'll be adding in a bunch of upper harmonics. And um, this was actually uh, uh, back in talks with Ben a long time ago, where this was actually this was a piece of feedback from him early on was to bring in some of that low end again, mm -hmm. um, and that's where you'll see in this um, at the end of chain essentially and on the back it's actually configurable um, I don't even know if I mentioned this in the manual <laughs> uh, but on the back um, what which input feeds the sub oscillator is actually controllable via jumper on the back um, and then uh, what you can do is you can then via that last crossfader is you can crossfade in either the press circuit from the the left hand side of the module um, or you can bring in uh, some of the that lower end some of that sub oscillator to give the sound a bit more warmth. Um, I mean, it is still a square wave because it's a sub oscillator. Almost, mm -hmm. almost all um, uh, subs are going to be squares because of the flip flop circuit that's used for them. Mm -hmm. um, but um, uh, it will um, still add in some of that lower end warmth uh, to your sound, and you know, uh, just add, add that body back in with all that kind of crazy upper harmonics that come in from the rest of the module. Yeah, I like that because, again, when I went down the path of playing around with make noise stuff and exploring West Coast synthesis, it's it's something that happens. It's like it just makes your sound super yeah. duper bright, you know, really cuts through. And again, as somebody who doesn't really think of, of sound really bridging the frequency spectrum that crazily, you do realize, oh, I did lo lose my low end there. So it's kind of it's like kind of a nice trick, especially people who are. Again, there's not really this concept of East Coast, West Coast synthesis. It's more of just like something we tell ourselves to um, 
it's part of synth history, and it kind of describes two different ways of thinking about sounds. But you know, West Coast synthesis, removing those harmonics and just adding them back in, or adding way too many harmonics and then adding in the low harmonics again. Yeah, yeah it, it makes people who may think or, the fold is a little too nasally. Yeah, it, it just you know, or, it pulls out the sound. Yeah, again. or as you're seeing here in the case right now, you have dirty laundry going into a filter. Yeah, right. Yeah, so exactly. it's it, you know adding the harmonics and then trying to tame those harmonics back down a little bit. Yeah, because. Um, <laughs> Uh, um, sometimes it's just, it's a bit too much and you want to tame it down. So. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, it, I don't think we should be so strict about, um, kind of the usage of these things. Cause yeah, I know my make noise system had no filters, but I still do like to, I love the sound of a sweeping filter. So who, <laughs> who doesn't, right? As um, a, as a Chicago house and uh, Detroit techno guy. Yes. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Just a bit, you know, uh, excellent. So I guess, uh, is there, are there any other thoughts you have about the dirty laundry that you'd like to share? Cause otherwise uh, I'd like to hear how it sounds. Yeah, no, I think it's time to, to jump into a demo. Awesome. Let's do it. Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, here uh, to gonna walk you through a patch with the with uh, dirty laundry. Um, got a small little system here. Uh, Gen Gafkara, uh, which is a, a small um, marbles re redesign. Um, it's just generating a step sequence uh, going into Bosque, um, and which is a, a small six HP oscillator. Um, and then we're just taking the sine wave uh, from that uh, Bosque into Dirty Laundry. Um, there's some additional modulation coming in, uh, which I'll talk about uh, a little later. Um, then we have Popple uh, to tone down some of those upper harmonics. Uh, so we can get a little low pass filtering coming out of it. Um, and then some DVCA is the mix on the output. Uh, we also have some PK, a PK up at the top, which I might get into drums. I might not. All depends on how this, how this kind of steps through. Um, yeah. So, um, the Kara right now, uh, is just, again, bringing in a small, uh, I think it's a 16 step, um, uh, loop into Bosque and just generating a nice little sine wave baseline here. Um, and then uh, what we get with Dirty Laundry uh, is you get um, the, the two sides of the module. You have the press side um, over here with press and then the res and uh, drive um, uh, circuits. And then on the right side of the module, you get uh, the uh, fold circuit. Um, between each of those, you have a crossfader uh, so that you can um, crossfade what goes into the fold side and what comes out of the fold side. Um, and into this output VCA at the at the end of chain here. Um, so uh, what we're going to do right now is we're going to bring in a little bit of uh, the res drive uh, by by bringing it in at the end of chain here. Um, so you're going to start to hear some of that upper harmonics now. That's coming from the res and drive circuits here. So you get a little bit of uh, that kind of squelchy high end. Um, and then you're getting a little bit from the press circuit because it's being modulated, but it's just a single fold. So you're going to get a little bit of additional um, additional harmonics there. Uh, but then with this end of stage here, the this this last folder here, this is where you get the multi-stage folder, and it'll really start to add in some meat into that. Again, you can add in with the dres and, and the drive and get that kind of tuned in based on the notes that are coming in. Because you will see that these frequency changes will actually change what's resonating and what isn't. Um, so you just got to kind of adjust that. Um, but then uh, the this then this crossfader in the middle is now gonna we're gonna bring in because we're gonna fade it into in two um, is that we're gonna actually gonna bring in some of this circuit into what is being sent into the fold circuit so it's gonna just increase the uh, the amount of um, of peaks for the fold circuit to really sink into. So then you just get this kind of full fullness uh, in the in your sound. Um, again, you can start to tame some of that back down if you want to get a little some a little rid of some of that screechiness. Um, but then also you can start to bring in some modulation too with the tilt, bringing in some modulation into the fold. Bring 
in a little drum just to give it a little bit more. Or not, because it's, it's a little random and not sounding very good. Anyways, um, yeah, so that just kind of demonstrates uh, the uh, left-hand side of this. If we just bring this over to just hearing now the, the press circuit, you can hear you lose some of the throatiness coming out of the fold. And again, why all these crossfaders are also kind of important uh, so that you can control how the circuit is, how the sound is being crafted here with the different wave folders as well as then this drive circuit here. Um, and then I guess uh, lastly, just the show here, um, bringing in a little bit of the sub. Just shows how you can bring in a nice and you can go all the way over to it. Anyways. So that's the kind of basic walkthrough on uh, Dirty Laundry. Um, and uh, yeah, if anybody has any questions, I'll certainly try to monitor the comments here and ask away. Thanks a lot.